I was back in the playground, I was about four feet high. Yes, dreamed I was back in the playground, standing about four feet high. Well, the playground was three miles long, and the playground was five miles wide. It was broken black tarmac with a high wire fence all around. Broken black dusty tarmac with a high fence running all around. It had a special name to it. They called it the Killing Ground. Got a mother and a father, they're 1,000 years away. The rulers of the Killing Ground are coming out to play. Everybody thinking, who are they going to play with today? You get it for being Jewish, and you get it for being black. You get it for being chicken, and you get it for fighting back. You get it for being big and fat, and you get it for being small. Oh, those who get it, get it and get it for any damn thing at all. I kept having nightmares of that boy. He kept beating me up again and again. The night, the night before, I thought, Oh no, I'm going to face those, that, that lot again. It just got worse every day, name calling, thumping, you know, every little chance she got. He used to hit me every time he saw me, doesn't matter where it was, where teachers were, he just kept hitting me, um, threatened me with knives. I don't know why they did it, they just kept doing it and doing it. I heard a deep voice talking, it had that iceberg sound. It prepares them for life. But I have never found any place in my life worse than the killing ground. John, I want to talk about that incident yesterday. You punched me in the face, and that's it. And then I walked out of the class. And they rose all over your trousers. Trousers. Mm. So you walked out of class. Yeah. Did you report the incident to anybody? To the teacher who was in the class, but he never done nothing. He didn't do anything. Why do you think that was? I don't know. You never see it. You can't talk in front of him. You feel you can't talk to this teacher? No. Why? What happens when you try to talk? He goes on. He goes shh, shh, shh. Just tells you to shush. I run a unit in a school in North London for children with behavioural and emotional problems. This is quite a unique resource. A lot of their problems relate to bullying. Hi, Ron. Hello, We're nowhere near admitting that we've got a problem with bullying in this country, yet we've probably got the worst bullying in Europe. The statistics indicate one in five children as being victims Hi, of bullying. But in actual fact, I think this is a vast underestimate. This is just the tip of the iceberg. These are the children who've actually reported what has happened to them. And I think that the actual number of children who've been bullied at some point in their life could easily be 75%. Bullying is a form of child abuse. It ranges from what teachers regard as minor incidents, where you pinch somebody's coat and hide it, to very, very severe incidents where a child actually dies. Life at school is a misery for many, many children. It is absolutely criminal that we should force children to go into school and then not make it one of the happiest experiences of their life. They bully me a lot, say horrible names to me and everything, and stop telling lies about me that I've said this when I haven't and try to um, get me beaten up by telling someone that I've said this about him when I haven't. As I came out of school, the boy goes, I'm going to beat you up, I'm going to kill you. He punched me first 
and then I hit him. Then when I hit him just once, he went wild, so he started doing everything. And he kept hitting me in the same spot where my eye was bleeding, my nose was bleeding. He kept going at me really badly. Even his friends couldn't stop him, even the ladies couldn't stop him. He even threatened that they'll call the police, and he said, go and call the police, I'm just going to kill him first. And I was just shocked to see the state he was in, and the first thing that came to my mind was, oh God, he's been run by a, uh, run over by a hit and run. In a car accident, that's what I thought. Uh, I couldn't recognize him. His face was totally different. It was massive, swelling, covered in blood. His whole jacket was in blood, his face was in blood, his lips were swollen, his nose was very badly swollen. He had cuts and bruises on his forehead, and his eyes were totally like closed. He couldn't open his eyes, you know. Well, the very next day, I got in touch with the school, and. Um, they just said to me that, uh, quite clearly, it was um, a police matter. As it had happened outside school, it was no longer their responsibility. And that was it. But I now received a threatening letter saying that my son shouldn't be coming to school, that he'd missed his face and the whole family's face. I was very, very shocked and so distressed. I thought I'd go to the police station personally, and as I was about to get out of the house, I saw that lad hanging around this house. He came towards us, giving us an intimidating look, and he blocked the way. My son was terrified. He was so terrified that that was the first time I became aware how frightened my son was. Up till now, I thought Saeed can cope, but when I saw the look on my son's face, then I realized that how much fear that boy had put into my son. And I went to the police station, and the policeman just laughed. He just didn't take it seriously at all. And I just started to cry. I couldn't stop it. I just became so emotional. And uh, I felt so hurt that I was being treated like this. So I just burst into tears. There is a conspiracy of silence in this country about bullying. Schools become extremely defensive and the response to what do you do about bullying in schools is, oh, we don't have a problem. That is total rubbish. It is absolute rubbish. There is always bullying. But what we have to do is to admit we have a problem with bullying and re-channel those aggressive tendencies and behaviours into much more acceptable terms. I was hit. I was beaten up. I was threatened with knives. Um, they got gangs of people onto me to hit me and beat me up. I was covered in bruises and cuts and things. I was frightened to go to school. Um, I didn't want to go up to the shops because I knew it would be there waiting for me. Um, I think it came down especially just to wait for me to come out, really, from the house and go up to the shops. Um, but I was frightened to go out. I didn't want to go to school. I had rows with my mother. I didn't want to go. I was scared. And sort of you always got a feeling inside you every time you went past the sort of school. It was very frightening indeed. We had not really fights, but it was that he didn't want to go and no, he wasn't going to go. Please let him stop. Please let him stop. Please let me stay at home. Don't let me go to school. Let me stay at home. Please, please. And this please business was going on and on and on and on and on. And then he said, I've got to take five pounds in. Uh, the boy once said, I said, what for? I said, you're not giving it to a boy. He said, I've got to. Please let me take it. Otherwise, I'll get beaten up. And I said, no, I'm not giving five pounds. I'll come to school. Don't come to school, don't come to school. Anyway, and he didn't take your five pounds, and he got beaten up again. And so it went on and on and on for two years. I told the teacher that I was being bullied, and I don't think he really paid much attention. I don't think he was bothered. Um, he didn't sort of do anything to stop this boy from hitting me or any of his groups from hitting anybody. He didn't pay any attention whatsoever. He used to come in lesson because I wanted to leave school and go to a different school sort of nearby. But he didn't want me to. They said, I can't. And um, so when he came into a lesson, he used to say, oh, Simon wants to leave this school, does he? Because he's being bullied. Oh, dear. So I said, well, I can't take it any longer, so I'm absolutely fed up with this. And I said, well, we'll go to the council. And we looked at all the lists of council councils. 
So I let him choose wherever he wanted to live, he could have lived. Didn't matter, I didn't care if it was in Timbuktu, that's where he's going to be happy. We went to Western Supermare, Bournemouth, Oxford, Bath, we went everywhere. And in the end, we saw this one. And as soon as Simon came, he just looked at me and he said, this is it, we'll have this one. We sold some of the furniture to pay for the removal. And we were all packed, ready to move down to Norfolk. Uh, the truant officer came down and uh, he said, um, Simon's uh, form teacher had sent him down because uh, Simon um, had had rather a lot of time off. And this was the first time the truant officer had ever been. And which seems funny when you think how much time it had had off. And he said, uh, Simon isn't at school now. I said, no, he's helping to pack. We're moving. He said, but why are you moving? And I said, because of the bullying. I said, didn't the teachers tell you? And he said, no, he's never told me a thing. So he said, you better tell me. And he said, it, the boy should have been made to have been left the school. He should have, he should have been you know, moved to a, another school or anything. It, and it shouldn't have been Simon that should have moved. And you shouldn't be moving now. He said, but there's nothing I can do now. When a child actually has to move from one school to another, that child actually is a double victim because they've been bullied in one place, they have to start afresh at another place. And the pattern is established that the only way to cope with bullying is to flee. And that isn't a really effective strategy for life. Well, sometimes it might be because you look, sometimes it might be because you're small or you're too big. Uh, out like that, they'll, if bullies want to pick on you, they'll find a way to pick on you. Ever since I've scored, started school, I've been like a right slow writer, and uh, I haven't, I haven't like, wore like, very cool clothes and stuff like that, and people have tormented me for that and tormented me for being, for being slow, and it's just like carried on through school. When I talk to home and tell my parents that I've been bullied, they just uh, it's them back in that. But if you don't like fighting, what good's that? Girls do it much different than lads do it, because girls are mostly rape bitchy to each other than lads. They, they say it in a mean way, but lasses do it in a rape bitchy way. I had a pattern to it. They, they did something, you know, she'd, she'd attack me really seriously, you know, and then they'd come back into school. And they'd start getting friendly again, saying they, they're sorry about what's happened. Then they'd start all over again. I just couldn't stand it. It just got worse every day. Name calling, thumping, you know. Every little chance she got. None of us have ever been to the teacher before. When we got called down, we thought something really solid was going to be done about it. Then he, he took me in his office and talked to me. And um, not so many words, he just said I was imagining it. He said that I was paranoid. The following day in the high street, Sarah was coming home from school and uh, the same pupil accosted Sarah and myself. We were together and that didn't stop her. And she came across the street and sort of launched into the two of us again in the high street. She hasn't been to that school since, as she said. And from that day, no. Sarah's not been back to that school. And it went on for nine months. It went on for nine months, I mean, Nine months, it's, can you imagine that? Every day getting up and going out into that, knowing, knowing what you're going to, going to face. I'm not surprised, she, I'm not surprised mm. she couldn't go any longer. Because it just, it just takes away anything that you've, any thoughts you've got about yourself, any good thoughts you've got about yourself, you know, they're out of the window because you're hearing constantly, all day, how bad you are, how bad you're looking, how fat you are, you know, all this, and it doesn't do anything for you. One teacher said, just the old way and trust in God. One, one teacher said it was just little ripples that happened all through life. They said it was human nature to be like this, being girls, young girls. They're just jealous. You're at that age. That was a favourite. Did you see the kittens? Yeah, I went down there, me and my dad, and he got that sand. 
We had a meeting with the headmaster. Basically, it was just a matter of we were saying it was six of one after the other and leave it, to, you know, leave it long enough, it'll go away. And she hadn't been to school since October 88, and no one from the Education Authority has been in contact with us since October 88. She's had no education for over 12 months now. No one bothers. It's as though Sarah's walked out of the school and they'd like to see it back a bit, they don't want to know. Sometimes they take a beetle, tear off its six legs, one by one. Beetle on its black back, rocking in the lunchtime sun. But a beetle can't beg for mercy. A beetle's not half the fun. They know they're getting better of you if you're crying over it. They'll think, oh, it hurts them, it hurts them, yes, let's go and do it again. But if you can just laugh at it, then you're all right. They won't do it. They'll carry on doing it, but just keep laughing at it, put on a brave face. The whole sort of macho image of England is we're tough, we can fight, we're a grand nation. I think when children report that they've been bullied, the response is, well, so what? You know, get tough and up. Everybody gets bullied. We think, well, this is you know, part of the deal. If somebody like, somebody like Graham called me a name, I wouldn't take it, I wouldn't let him just stand there and just call me a name, because I'd have some of my mates there. And I won't, let, I won't stand in and take a name from him because it'll get round and we know he's took a name from him and not done out. So I just, I won't call him a name back, I've done more than that to him. You know what I mean? Well, on the whole, I think victims are very bewildered people who have no idea why they're getting this enormously aggressive response from their peers. Why do you think they pick on you? Just, uh, yeah. mm. Well, but either they enjoy it or we know. I think they do enjoy it, Peter. We yeah. spend a lot of time yeah. telling children don't tell tales. Yeah. This is absolutely yeah. the wrong thing to tell them because if they don't tell us, we can't do anything. And children get into the habit of not confiding in adults and they get into the habit of thinking, well, they don't do anything. You've learned a hard lesson. Peter. What you should be saying to children is, please tell us, if you don't tell us, we can't do anything. We have to teach our children to okay. trust us Peter, again. I'd like to talk about how you cope in the playground when people bully you, right? Mm. I've noticed that you've been staying with the dinner ladies and talking to them. Is that because you feel safer? Yeah. They um, sometimes send him out or they just tell him off. It started with name calling and that and sort of Jeering at me, and, um, I had different bags or something, or different hairdo, or my hair wasn't right, and, and it just progressed worse. They said he's a, a tramp, that um, he's got no brain. Uh, they said he smells, he's smelly Stephen. Um, anybody who talks to Stephen must be desperate. Sometimes it was get Stephen day when he would come home with his trousers muddy or his shoes a mess. And it was the constancy of it. It wasn't just an odd day, it was every day. And it seemed to Stephen that it was always Stephen. You think, oh no, I made a fool of myself. Oh, and like really not wanting to go to school for fear I'll make a fool of myself again today. I don't want to go back to school. He asked his brothers for advice. Or we talked to friends, got um help advice from, from other friends. Mostly it came back in the form of, well, yes, if you do this, Stephen, if you do that, try this, but always something for Stephen to do to change it himself. I said, you smell, so I think, oh, God, I might do, actually. It's like bars twice a day and scrubbing myself with TCP and that. Like, because I said, you, you, you got spots and like, scrubbing my nose until it's really sore, with TCP, and really like that. But it got more and more serious and Stephen became more and more withdrawn until he got to the point where he was looking at himself and feeling that there must be something wrong with him if they were picking on him in this way and there was something he ought to do to change himself to be accepted. And 
he wasn't sleeping at night. I noticed that. He was walking the boards to the bathroom night after night. He wasn't asleep before midnight most of the time. Bob, a close friend of the family, he said, don't bottle up your anger inside. Just let it out. Wallop, wallop, wallop. Not the punch will fly. Because I was that angry, I thought, this is, this is not right. Why am I suffering? Well, that's to their head. <laughs> or the main cause is head. <laughs> that's it. Give it a good right hook. I felt angry and I felt, right, I'm going to get him tomorrow. And when the day came, I didn't because I chickened out. But I thought I might get done by the teachers or something. I'm a widowed mother, so I hadn't got um, a husband to back me up. And I, I felt very frustrated by the feeling that um, they thought that it only needed time to ignore it and, and it would go away and I was just being overprotect overprotective and perhaps slightly neurotic and maybe it was partly my fault that Stephen was like this. I felt that the best idea was to get the boys named by Stephen all in a room together and for Stephen to have his say and let them know how he was feeling and what they'd done and not for Stephen to run away from it. But it seemed to be left and left. They didn't feel that it was necessary to act very fast. Finally, he broke down completely and said, Mum, I can't take any more. I've had enough. I said I wasn't going to send Stephen to school to be exposed to that until something changed it. And I couldn't see the problem with arranging this meeting. I didn't know why there had been this delay because it was such a simple thing that I, I wanted. So finally, a meeting was arranged before assembly one day and um, about half a dozen or so boys w were brought in with Stephen. When they said, he said, we didn't know. I mean, he was, he was calling us names back and doing him things back so he thought it was all right. I said to him, that was just out of sheer frustration. I said, well, we didn't, we just didn't know that it was getting so bad. And I thought, no, I, just, I asked him, don't think of me as a snitch. I mean, I didn't snitch on any of you. They all stopped, literally. And then after when they thought it was safe, they just sort of started calling me the odd occasional dig like we all do to them. That was quite natural. I thought, you pee have won. It's very essential that you do follow up any incidents because, as you know, John didn't report mm -hmm, it to anybody. Right. Nothing could be done unless it's reported. Mm -hmm. And parents can help in situations like, like you did. You phoned up, it was instant mm -hmm. reporting, and I followed it through. That's right. right? Yeah. Parents can force schools to do something. If you persist long enough, the schools will take notice of you. You've always well. dropped everything. When it involves and you, John. Exactly. Well, this is the way we can act. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying to John, I want him to learn to try to trust other people, get you involved with his new head of the year, because we do need all the support we can get. And if we act as a team, then we're going to we get, get somewhere. somewhere. We? Otherwise, we can't get nowhere. I mean, you must listen to your children. You must take your child seriously. You mustn't brush it off and say, well, I can't do much about it. It's happening in school. Parents must force the school to do something about bullying. We've got to encourage John to learn to trust the staff like you trust. Yeah? Yeah. One thing that is never really recognised is that the effects of bullying doesn't cease once a child leaves school. The ramifications are endless. The victim is damaged. Research has shown that 68% of bullies go on to be violent adults. In other countries, in the Scandinavian countries, they actually admitted they had a problem. They actually devised strategies to try and prevent bullying occurring, rather than trying to pick up the pieces afterwards, which is what we're doing in this country. They're asking teachers and pupils to discuss incidents. They want their opinions. They want reports from the children and the teachers. But in this country, there's no national policy to help schools it's down to individuals. Come on, let's play! Pass the bogey! Oh, Eugene, you dropped it. Round two! Round two! One very exciting initiative is the Netty Netty Theatre Company. 
They're setting up workshops in schools, learning from the experiences of children, and then writing plays about bullying, which they perform back in the same schools. This really makes the kids and the teachers think about the problem. Silly, silly boy, I didn't want to have to do this. But we're going to have to. We've got a problem. There's an empty chair. And in the chair, sitting someone is giving us a lot of trouble. A bully. Imaginary. Have a think. Who do you know who bullies? Got a picture? Right, let's have a, let's have a, let's make a person real. What's he like? Horrible. Horrible. Ho horrible. Okay, it's horrible. Fat. It's got spots. Good boy. Spots? Yeah. Why, why has he got, why do you think he's got spots? Because he eats lots of chips. <laughs> eats lots of chips? What does he do? What does he do? Have a thing. What does he do to you? What does he do to other people? He gets money. He gets money. When he's fighting, all his mobs in a circle, and he gets the person on the floor, and they all start kicking all at the same time. When we're playing sports like football, I'll, if I tackle him after school, he'll beat me up. He's done, done something to you? Mm -hmm. What did he do? Asking me for money and I wouldn't give it to him, so he just punched me in the face. Punched you in the face? And what did he do? Couldn't do nothing. So what, why does he fight all the time? Because he's mad. He's mad? Yeah. Maybe he's got parental <laughs> problems. You think he's got problems with his parents? Yeah, maybe that they beat him and he gets in trouble a lot. Uh-huh, so what does and he do? Sometimes from school reports, he might get in trouble from that. Uh-huh. Takes out. And takes out his children, yeah. Do the, do, do the teachers know he bullies other kids? Yeah. 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 I don't tell when people know things like that. The teachers say don't tell tales? Yeah. Or you say don't tell tales? They say, they they say, say that. that. But they know he bullies? Yeah. And teachers think it's not their problem. Teachers think it's not their problem? Yeah, because it's after school it's and it's all near the bus stop. Uh huh. Yeah, do, you, I mean, do you agree with that, that, that it's not the teacher's problem because it happens at the bus stop, not in the classroom? It does. I think it is the teacher's problem because it's going in for. Yeah. You get it for being Jewish. You get it for being black. You get it for being chicken. You get it for fighting back. Get it for being big and fat. Get it for being small. Or those that get it, get it, get it. For any damn thing at all. As you may know, I've been doing workshops in schools, trying to explore the, the issue of bullying with them, using, using drama. And it was incredibly subtle. These are 12-year-olds, and they're showing such deep understanding of what was going on, how it all worked. <laughs> Leave me alone, oh, leave me alone I'm not crying, just got something in my heart Maybe I'm not that strong What should I be doing, I'm doing wrong I just can't seem to get along with others of my kind Shut up! In schools, it's not a topic which is much talked about. And possibly the first casualty of bullying is communication, is the ability to articulate what it's all about. It's so built into the fabric of being in a classroom that there is bullying going on, there is, there's tension there all the time. Keeping silent, not grasping, is, is such a sort of important part of growing up, keeping your defences tight so that you can get through the school day. There ain't no asylum here Your mother can't help you here Johanna Mitroli Go straight to hell, boys Human behaviour is very complex. You can be a bully and a victim at the same time. In one situation you're a bully, in another situation you're a victim. It's very important not just to accept labels from people that, oh, he's a bully, because labels are very unjust as well as being extremely misleading. Now, at the 
end of last term, what's that, a score for you? Right, at the end of last term, we had a lot of problems, didn't we? We were getting into a lot of fights and bullying, yeah? And in fact, you were off school for a couple of days, weren't you? With the bully, I will operate a program which hopefully will stop his bullying behaviour and show him that there are other ways of behaving which are just as rewarding. But that's a much more long-term piece of intervention because bullying is learned over a long period of time generally. They've got lots of models that they learn from. They may well have an aggressive parent. They may well have aggressive teachers. You get blamed. Why do you get blamed? Because if I one of the younger boys, then the teacher might tell me or will suspend me because it will come back to me in, in the end. It does come back to you in the end, but why does it, it come back to you particularly? Because I'm older than you. You're older than you. The technique well, with the tough-minded child is to have a contract and in the contract you say, well, in exchange for you changing your behaviour, I will do something for you that you want. If he breaks the contract, he can see that you are going to be equally tough and withdraw the privileges. And that privilege could be something as simple as a game of snooker. When I, since I had that little um, for good behaviour, I started to get better. What you're saying to me is that you actually realise the sense of what people have been saying to you, yeah? And actually being good, as they term it, or behaving properly, does have its rewards, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's not nice always being a bad person, is it? You get fed up always being the bad guy. All right, people stick labels on you, don't they? If you get into trouble all the time, it's a vicious circle. And in the end, when any trouble happens, they always say, oh, it's got to be Anthony's fault. They don't listen to your side of the story. That's what you were saying to me, that people wouldn't listen to you. But now you start... However much teachers would like to be able to handle bullying, they do have an enormous number of problems to cope with. And yet we are expected to operate a service on minimal staffing levels. Our government does very little about bullying. They don't actually put in any resources. They don't offer training to teachers. They just say, get on with it. And this is totally ineffective. Myself, I have never, ever had an inspection in the 10 years I've been operating. So far, you've learnt this term then, that bullying doesn't pay, does it? I have never had any support. Do you think? I wouldn't think that we were running away. Simon's happy now. He's got some really wonderful friends. The school is excellent. And the teachers, the headmaster, every single person at that school is absolutely wonderful. And it's lovely. And he's happy. And that's the main thing. It's a much nicer school. Everyone's much more friendly. I got a better report much better report than I did at my other school. But I'm still looking forward to leaving. My brothers want me to stay on, but I don't want to. I want to get out as quick as I can. I don't enjoy school at all, I don't know why. Um, I think it's because of this boy and what he did. comes to say help I can't take any more that that is where you've got to start to help them uh, no, I think the servers have and if schools generally could say okay let's have everybody in and let's talk about it and deal with it like that it would be great it needn't be such a dreadful ordeal and I'm just so relieved that it's worked out all right for Stephen and he's normal and ordinary again <laughs> It's quite horrible to really get bullied. You feel, why is it me? What have you done to them? You haven't really done nothing to them and just keep 
picking on you for no reason and you you think that once it gets too much you don't want to live life is really bad suggestions were made that if i wished i could send said to another school but i'm refusing why should my son have to run away from this school and go to another school when my son is not guilty in any way at all why should he have to spoil his education start all over again what if the similar lads in that school again the problem is there so there's no way i'm going to change side school he's going to go to the school and he's going to go after the matter is sorted out adequately even if it means involving the mp and the councillors and all the people in the high places but i will do it the biggest effect is had upon sarah is she's grown up too quick this last 12 months too quick she's not got a contact with her friends because the others that was in the school tend to be shying away from her she'd become rather into her at home on her own we're at work all she's got really is a television for a friend look it's licking it so she found the wildcats at the builders yard and she'll go down there now and she talks to them for an hour goes and plays with those rather than being at school Mum and Dad, who like I really let them down, you know, they disappointed in me. Um, we're not as close as we used to be. We don't talk to each other as much. We don't communicate at all, really. I find it a lot harder to trust people now and talk to people. I mean, the people I've trusted have all, they've all run back or turned on me, you know. I just find it hard to talk about it to anybody. I'd like to just go back to school somewhere where she's not going to be there. If she wasn't going to be at that school, I'd come back to that school. But then again, you've got all the teachers and all the kids who know about it. And when I'm old enough, I just want to get a, a job doing what I want to do, which is working with children. But then again, they might not take me on with having no qualifications. Only playing now, no, no, no. Only playing now, no, no, no. Only playing now, no, no, no. Who's going to be the one we bully on the playground today? A lot of bullies say they're just playing this. It's just horseplay. I think if one child is visibly distressed, it's not horseplay. There's no play about that. That is deliberate infliction of hurt. It shouldn't need saying that it is far better to have happy human beings and not damaged ones, but it may take another serious incident or another death before the government will be forced to do something. I'm not on it always happens on concrete playgrounds. There's always someone living a life in fear. There's always got to be a scapegoat. There's a million victims out there. Only playing now, no, no, no. Only playing now.